So in this session, we've really been kicking the tires of Docker and just getting a few extra commands under our belt. And we've seen where we can find images. But really, we're not able to do anything useful with, for example, the Ubuntu image directly. The intention of those images is that we create our own images based on them. And we'll learn how to do that in the next chapter. But what I thought I'd do to end the chapter is give you a very short exercise just to practice what we've done here. And the exercise is I would like you to have a try at finding an image which is supporting Tomcat. And if you can find that image, then run a container from it and see if you can expose the default Tomcat homepage on port 80. Your starting point for this is to have a look at Docker Hub. And I promise you, this is a really simple exercise. So if you find yourself getting in real trouble, then a quick walkthrough will follow after this fade to black. So definitely a simple exercise, this one, because you might have thought before doing this course that to get a Docker container, you're going to have to get yourself uh, an Ubuntu container, for example, and then somehow SSH into that container and install Java and then install Tomcat and then configure Tomcat. But you know now from this chapter that there are thousands of predefined images available. There's almost certainly one available that will have a Tomcat installation pre-configured. So if we do a search on Docker Hub for Tomcat, yeah, we've got six and a half thousand repositories at the time of recording. A lot of really mysterious ones. No idea what these are for, but, but there may be something very useful in these. But right at the very top, there's the official one. There's no forward slash in front. So we know this is going to be a safe image, a well-defined, well-configured image, the Tomcat official image. Now, there's a lot of information on here. Actually, one of the things I haven't talked about so far is the concept of tags. And you can think of these tags as just being different versions of that image. And as a Java developer, you'll almost certainly recognize the fact that, oh, yeah, they've, they've got images here supporting Tomcat 6, Tomcat 7, 8 and 9. And they've also gone to the effort of supporting various different Java runtimes. Now, another thing that I'll return to later on in the course, but you'll see some of these Tomcat images are tagged dash Alpine. What's going on there is there is a Linux distribution called Alpine, which is getting more and more attention now because really because of Docker in that often what we want with containers is the smallest possible container size. And there really is no sense in having a full Linux distribution with millions and millions of tools and packages that that container is never going to use. So Alpine is fantastic in that it is a very minimal Linux distribution. I mean, there's almost nothing bundled with it, just the very basics. And oftentimes that's perfect for what you need in a container. So I didn't tell you this, but you can pick any of these tags and the way you would choose a particular tag is when you do the pull, docker pull tomcat, you would do colon followed by the tag that you want to pull. And in Docker images, there's always one image that is tagged as latest, and that will become the default if you don't specify it. And tomcat's quite an interesting one. I mean, usually the latest tag would be the most up to date version of this particular image. But actually, if we click the link through to tags here, there's a complete list of all of the tags. So there's Tomcat 9 built against Alpine and quite a long, long, long list until we get to this one here, which is tagged latest. It's this image here, which is 127 megabytes. And actually, the latest tag is a, an alias, effectively, for version 8, which is itself an alias for, in fact, all of these, all of these tags, which are 127 megabytes, are all aliases for the same image. Really, this latest is 8.5.16 built against Java runtime 8. And they've just provided these alternative tags as kind of conveniences 
and also that happens to be tagged as latest. Of course, by the time you do this, the latest tag will probably be associated with something different. Anyway, that's a lot of talk, but we know we can just do a Docker image pull Tomcat will, and we can see using the default tag latest, and then it will be downloaded. Something else to notice is that if you've already got a particular image or even part of an image, then it won't download it again. So that's good efficiency. I happen to have already got the Tomcat image, so I didn't need to download it. Now we need to run a container from it. So it's going to be docker container run. I suggest it would be worth doing a dash D on this because we want to run it in the background in detached state. We need to publish the ports. 80 is going to go to 8080. And then well, I think we're done, really. We can run Tomcat. Ah, yes, so I'm glad this has happened. It might well have happened to you. It's important to remember that just as any on any machine, really, across all of your Docker containers, you can only use a single port once. You can't have container A using port 8080 and container B using port 8080. And that's because ultimately these containers are running on the same machine. They are sharing the same Linux kernel. So it's important then if I do a docker ls-a, oh, I should say docker container ls-a, it's important to make sure you stopped your Fleetman web app container. Okay, and now I should be able to recall that command and run my Tomcat. So there we are, I have a new container now, this one beginning C0. If I want to look at its logs, I can do docker container logs. I'll do a dash F to follow those logs and the ID of the container C0. And yeah, there we can see the logs and it took about a second to start up. I'm back to my browser. If I do a refresh on localhost, I don't need a port. There we are, we have the default Apache Tomcat homepage. Well, again, I know I've said this several times on this chapter, but it's worth repeating that this image isn't really that useful because it doesn't have any apps installed on it. And I could possibly use the manager app here to manually upload a WAR file to this Tomcat, but we really don't want that. We want an image which has already got our application installed. And to do that, we're going to have to learn how to make new images based on old ones. So we'll be doing that in the next chapter.